Hey everyone, it's Eugene's third leg, aka David's good friend Taylor, and this is my first solo video I'm doing. Thankfully, David has been gracious enough to give all of his close friends the opportunity to do these kinds of videos and talk about their personal life, because we all have some kind of interesting story to tell, I believe. So this is my first chance to do so, and I'm really happy. Just a shout out to David and the work ethic he has and the time and effort he puts into this, being a full-time college student as well. It's amazing how he gets this done and has just such high quality being a one-man wrecking crew. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more content from David, me, and anybody else who decides to have some stories on here. So without further ado, I'd like to get into my top 10 times I almost got kicked out of school. This goes from elementary school all the way up until senior year in high school, and I'm doing it a bit different than most top 10 countdowns. This is going to be in chronological order, which may seem a bit strange, but I think it makes sense. It helps you figure figure out how things have gone over time. Plus, as time went on, it got more and more serious. Times I almost got kicked out were a lot more serious in senior year than they were, say, elementary, middle school. Number 10. In fourth grade, I had to take dance class. All fourth graders in my elementary school were required to, and there was one day, half the class was doing an exercise, the other half was sitting on the ground watching. I was in the group watching. I guess I was a little too close to one of the girls that was doing the exercise, and she ends up stopping looking at me and pretends to kick me. My teacher ends up stopping because I jumped backwards, kind of scooted myself back up to the wall, thought that I was disrupting the class. He ended up kicking me out of the class and made me write an essay about what I did wrong. I ended up having to deal with this for the rest of the school year because anytime I came into early care in the morning, he made me rewrite the essay every single time. Still to this day, I have not finished that essay. I never will. Number nine, I was in fifth grade and I remember I was hanging around a lot with with the younger kids. I had like two or three good friends my grade, but I think a lot of the younger kids kind of looked up to me just because I, I hung out with them a lot. And there was one time, the second grader, I was playing basketball with him. I guess someone lost the ball out of bounds and we were trying to decide whose ball it was. We ended up getting to a fight on the ground, on the basketball court, and I just started digging my nails into this poor second grader's gums and they started bleeding. I remember him crying in front of me. It was horrible, sadistic, in fact, that I would do such a thing. I'm surprised that given the severity of the issue, the kid could have gone to the hospital, could have had permanent scarring in his mouth. I have no idea. I don't know how it's possible I didn't get kicked out of school. Uh, that's quite remarkable and I'm not proud of myself. This was one of the dumbest things I've ever done and really I deserved uh, to get some kind of major punishment for this even though I didn't. Number eight, now we go to middle school and it was in seventh grade and this is really the one blemish I have on my record. It was my one detention I've ever gone in any year of grade school. I was in English class one day and I guess I made some kind of comment that could be taken as offensive towards a specific group of people. David has a certain fondness for. If you've seen his other videos, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna say what I said. All you need to know is I said something without understanding the meaning. Now this is a phrase that I'd heard my parents say in front of me, at home, on the phone with people, so I never knew what it meant. They never explained to me. And the next day, at same English class, everyone's standing outside an English classroom, and my teacher lets everyone go in except for me. And then she hands me the slip saying I have a detention because of, uh, of something that I said the day before. I had no idea what was going on. I was so upset because this was the only blemish I'd had on my entire record. Official blemish. I already said the whole thing about scratching the kid's gums out, but I was so upset. I still don't think it's my fault. I fully blame my parents for not <laughs> explaining these things to me back then, and I I'm never going to be able to live that down. Number seven, this one was completely on me. My dad, he does a lot of renovation and there's one house that he was doing and the guy, I guess, died beforehand and he left a bunch of stuff there. And we found some throwing knives in there and I thought, oh, this is so cool. I decided on the last day of seventh grade to bring knives to school. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. Anytime you bring some kind of weapon to school, that's reason enough to get expelled. You, you're a harm to anyone around you. Who knows what intent you have? My intent was just to be cool and show people, which is just the dumbest thing ever. And I managed to, I don't know how many people I showed, but I managed to not get in trouble the entire time. Thankfully, it was the last day of school. If they, if they didn't catch me, there's nothing they could do for an entire three and a half months. My family eventually found out, probably like a month or two later, they were not happy at all. But if there was one 
one time, really, I absolutely should have been kicked out. This had to be the time. I mean, I, I brought knives to school thinking it was cool. That's just absolutely stupid. Word of advice, don't ever do that. Number six. Now, this was a bit of a strange one. Technically not middle school, technically not high school. It's actually virtual school. At least in my school, there were different tiers of math classes. And the one that I was in was the highest level. I was two grades ahead of my class. So in eighth grade, I was taking geometry, which was a 10th grade math class. And I was really proud of myself. Maybe you say there was a bit of an ego there, but I had a friend, a good friend of mine, and she was in the same class as me. And she decided to take Algebra 2 online over the summer so that she wouldn't have to take it once she was in high school. Part of me had that ego, that pride, where I didn't want to be one up by someone else. So I just said, oh, I'm going to take this class too. So I decided over the summer to be taking Algebra 2 online, virtual school. Except the problem was I hardly ever did anything in that class. It took me a year and a half to finish taking that class. I went through two teachers, one of which got pregnant and had the child all before I finished that class. And it wasn't until, say, around like the end of freshman year, Year of high school that I was notified I'd be kicked out of the class, the virtual class, if I didn't finish it by a certain day. I remember just cramming in assignments non-stop until I think it was like the day of that we were supposed to get kicked out. I managed to get all the assignments. My record was like 13 assignments in one day. It was like the last week I just absolutely went ham on everything. Yeah, I almost even got kicked out of a virtual class, believe it or not. Number five is something that in hindsight, I'm so glad how it played out, even though in the moment I was extremely frustrated. In high school, I was in something called the IB program, short for International Baccalaureate, which was an advanced college preparatory program. And every year we had an event where we would celebrate the accomplishments of students within the program. And one of the big things they liked to do was a skit of some kind for each of the grades. So the freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors just all do their own skit in front of everyone in the program. We had an auditorium held maybe like 2,000 people, and there were probably around 1,000 students and faculty involved with the program, and they'd all be in there for this event. And for my junior year, I was part of the skit. I was behind the scenes running it, but I was also playing one of the characters. We were doing a family feud parody skit with each of us playing one of the teachers. The teacher that I was playing happened to be my 10th grade English teacher who was a female by the way. She was from Alabama but she ended up leaving in the middle of the school year in my sophomore year to go teach English in Vietnam and I decided it would be a good idea that I play her for whatever reason. I had a wig and I found some clothes at Goodwill. I put some kind of face mask stuff on so it looked like I had dirt. Pretty much I was pretending I'd just come out of the jungles in Vietnam and was back in Florida. Well the person that was supposed to give the cue for me to come on completely forgot his line there the whole skit went well it ran smoothly but I ended up not having the ability to come on stage I was so upset because I didn't get to actually perform but then as I thought about it I realized I was about to go on stage and completely make fun of one of the teachers here and everyone would know that person who did that it would be me I had found out later that she was actually on campus at the time which means she may have actually gotten word of it or may have even seen it and that would have just been been absolutely devastating for me. I'm so glad that happened the way it did, even though I was upset in the moment. If I went on stage completely made a fool of myself and got in trouble because I made a mockery of one of her former teachers, I would have so much guilt. To my final year of high school, there were multiple times where I was in trouble of getting kicked out of this program. One thing I should mention is I was not districted for my high school. The only reason why I could go there was because I was in the program, which didn't require being in the district. So if I got kicked out of the program, I'd be kicked out of the school. So that's why these top four are all very serious because I had college prep and this could have completely changed my college career. I may have not even had the chance to go to Southeastern with David and all that if it weren't for me miraculously getting through my last year. So number four, it takes place in between junior year and senior year and mainly the summer. We had in our program, we had to write something called an extended essay, which was roughly 3,500 to 4,000 words. That translates to about 20 pages that we had to write. And we had time during junior year, but bulk of it would be written during the summer. That's when we had to do all of our research. And I decided it would be a good idea to just not work on it the entire summer, not realizing that come orientation two weeks before school started, we had to hand in our essay in order to get our schedule for our senior year. So I come to orientation not realizing this. I can't get my schedule. I have no idea what my classes are. I end up talking 
meeting with some of my teachers that I had from the previous year and they told me, yeah, you have to have this in by Monday, meaning the day the school starts, by 7.30 in the morning, meaning you have to have this in by the time the bell rings for the first period, otherwise you get kicked out of the program. So I started writing this essay two days before school started on the Saturday and I sat in my mom's bathroom with the fan on for two straight days typing this thing away. It came out to probably like 4,400 words after the first draft and managed to get to school, turn it into the office, the IB office, five minutes before the school bell goes off. I had no idea what my schedule was the first day of senior year. I, I came to school not knowing who my teachers were, where my classes were, anything. I didn't even know if I was even going to have classes if I didn't get this turned in on time. I cut it that close. I spent two days typing a 20 page paper on a toilet and managed to get by on the skin of my teeth. Things did not get breezy from there though. Come around midterm time of the school year, we had to maintain at least, I believe, a C average. We had to have like a 70 or 71% average between all of our classes, which included our quarterly grades and our midterm grades. Otherwise, you guessed it, we'd be kicked out of the program. Well, I had some issues with some of my courses where I was just not doing the work. See, I have a lot of issues with English class, middle school, high school, so on and so forth. And I had a 58% second quarter. It was awful. And then in my chemistry, class, I decided to not do the midterm, so I had a zero for it, and I think I had like a 60 or 61% in that course, so I managed by one point to avoid getting an F in chemistry, so even though I had an F in one quarter in English and a zero on my midterm with just barely a D in chemistry, my overall average for all my classes was still high enough by one percentage to keep me in the program. I had some teachers who couldn't stand the fact that I was still in there, like how are you still still in here. Really, when it came down to midterm time, that was the big issue. I may have not made it through my last half of this year because I just slacked off so badly. I made it by one point. Now, number two, speaking of chemistry, things got pretty, pretty hairy. We'll say that terminology is very important to keep in mind. We had papers called internal assessments or IAs for short that we had to have. We had to turn in for each of our IB courses. So for chemistry, it was roughly a 15 page paper. I was the only student out of say like 90 kids who were maybe like 75 to 90 kids who were taking chemistry senior year who didn't do any lab work. Everyone else did. Everyone else did experiments. I was the only person who didn't do any lab work because I just completely slacked off. I had no data whatsoever. I had no information, no conclusion on anything. I had nothing to go off of. I think I wrote a paragraph introducing my topic. I had to write my entire paper, all 15 pages in one night because I decided the night before that it was due, this is when I'm going to start it. So I had to pull an all-nighter to type up 15 pages on a chemistry experiment that I did no work for, make up all the numbers, somehow managed to pass. There are two very key components here that you have to understand though. One of them is that Pokemon Go was a big thing back then in senior year. Now, I'll be honest, I still play it from time to time, but back then, senior year, even though a lot of people quit early on, I was still playing it every single day, even in until like March. The second, which goes back to the whole hairy situation thing, is I thought it would be a good idea to nair nether regions. I ended up dealing with the discomfort, like the residual nair stuck on my body in places that need not be mentioned again. It also reeked. It was horrible. So the whole night, barely awake, I have to focus on this 15 page paper I have to completely make up while being distracted by playing Pokemon Go and I reek of burnt hair and sulfur. I don't know how but I managed to finish the paper by morning, turn it in, and when all was said and done I got my grade back, I had a higher grade than the class average on something that I did absolutely no lab work for. How that is possible I don't know. I strongly do not recommend ever doing that and I've already done it twice I've said in this one video. But number one, the worst one I had, the closest I came to getting kicked was not just because I decided at the last second to turn in my work, but because I got threatened by my teacher. This was the only time I had a teacher actually threaten to kick me out of the program. It was in Spanish class, which was one of my best subjects. I've been taking Spanish for seven years at this point. I was one of the best students, even though I'm not a native Spanish speaker. And the teacher really liked me too. She knew 
knew that I was one of the best students in there. But the problem was, as you can imagine, I wasn't doing my work. So we're right before spring break. Half of the class had already gone off to go wherever, they're on cruises or whatever. So the other half is in class. This is the last period of the day on the Friday before spring break, the, the very last class until we're off for a week. And my teacher decides she's going to be looking at whoever had already turned in their stuff. It was like a 500 word paper, but it's all in Spanish that we were supposed to get done. Like turn in on Monday. I wasn't even like halfway done with it. And she says, Taylor, why didn't you turn in your paper? I couldn't give any real reason why. I'll save you the heartache that I had to deal with of like 10 minutes of her going off on me. Essentially, it culminated in her saying, I'm going to have you kicked out of this program. And if you don't leave my classroom right now, my head is going to explode. So she told me to GTFO of her classroom. I had to get my backpack and, and walk out. I didn't blow up on her. I was so stinking terrified of her that she was going to rip my head off. And I had to leave class and I had to go to the IB office and explain the situation. And the third in command there had to tell my teacher I have until like 6.30 to get it turned in. The grading had to be done by 10 o'clock at night. I left my phone in the classroom because I was so scared. I didn't get everything. I, I forgot my phone in there and I knew I couldn't go back in there. So I was afraid that I was going to lose my shot at graduating with, with my IB diploma, getting into a good college. I was going to lose my phone over spring break. Thankfully, I found one of my friends to get my phone out of her classroom. He gave it to me and we go through the entire spring break. I managed to turn it in at like 6 p.m. Right, I, right when I got home, finished the paper, got it done. I was so scared out of my mind. I never wanted to deal with that again. I, I really ruined a reputation that, that I'd built for four years in high school as being a, a good student. Although, as you can see, senior year, that seemed to all go down the drain. But my lesson to anyone that's watching this video is don't make the same mistakes I did. Now, thankfully, I had a complete turnaround. It wasn't like I absolutely threw away my future. College, I completely changed my work ethic. I graduated with honors, best in major completely different story i was gifted enough to be able to get through which i'm grateful for but i really have to be honest it's the it's the work ethic that gets you through like i said at the beginning of this video david has an incredible work ethic that allows him to do these videos and he's extremely talented too and that's why i think these videos are so good if you put that work in you put that effort in and you don't slack off and just think oh i can get by because i'm smart enough you got to put the work in if there was a moral to this I guess that will be the moral. I don't want to keep you guys too much longer. Thank you for listening, and thank you, David, for allowing me to do this. I hope you all have a great day. I just want to clear my mind. I am going for a ride. And like a bird, I want to fly above all my pain. Stepping on a pedal, I don't even want to take my foot off. Oh, no. Doing 120 on a 65. It's the only time that I feel alive When I'm speeding When I'm speeding Oh yeah I just wanna get everything out my mind When I'm done riding I know that I'll be fine So rubber rolling down the road You can watch me as I go I'm speeding Driving like I'm leaving everything behind me Yeah Speeding Yeah, yeah. Can't catch me, no Can't catch me I'm flying, yeah Riding like I'm leaving everything behind me, yeah I'm speeding